This is part one of the introduction to Verilog, and we are going to look at uh, some of the background of the language, and we are also going to take a look at structural description of um, digital circuits in Verilog, and we will end with a little bit of an outlook on behavioral description of circuits in Verilog. Modern digital circuits are too complex to design by hand from basic and or and not gates. But to be able to use uh, computer-aided design or CAD tools for simulation and implementation of logic circuits, some mechanism to describe large designs efficiently had to be developed. Verilog was developed in the 1980s as a language for simulation and verification of digital circuits. It later evolved into also hardware description language, um, HTL is the general acronym for that. And um, the language was actually put into public domain in part because at the same time there was another language, VHDL, that uh, was an open language to begin with that uh, competed with uh, Verilog and the founders of Verilog uh, were afraid that they would lose grounds if they wouldn't put it into the open domain. In 1995, uh, Verilog was adopted as an official IEEE standard called uh, uh, 1364-1995 standard. And there were additions and revisions made to this standard, still 1364, but there's a 2001 and a 2005 version. As I just mentioned, the competitor for Verilog is uh, VHDL. That stands for Very High Speed Integrated Circuit, or VHSIC, Hardware Design Language. Verilog has evolved into a fairly complex language, and it serves both uh, functional design, uh, testing, uh, verification, as well as the actual implementation. So a number of things were added to it that over time made it fairly complex. We will focus on a subset of the language uh, used for the most common design tasks. So we will focus on design tasks rather than verification tasks, for example. There are two main ways to describe a digital circuit. So we have Verilog as our hardware description language. And then we could have a structural description that focuses on things like uh, circuit building blocks, um, gates in the particular case of digital logic, and gates, OR gates, and so forth. Or we could use a behavioral description for uh, describing circuits where we do not specify what the circuit looks like, we just specify the function that the circuit has to perform. A behavioral description can be further subdivided in Verilog into continuous assignments. Okay, so we have the behavioral description here and into procedural assignments. The main difference here is um, where the outputs of such assignments go. A continuous assignment uh, places its output onto a net or onto a wire in, in inside uh, an FPGA, for example, whereas a procedural assignment that is computed at some point in time, uh, for example, on the basis of a clock, and then it can, has to get stored in some memory element or in a register. So that's one of the frequent confusions about Verilog is in which case are you going to use nets? And in which case are you going to use registers? And the basis of it is uh, really this distinction between continuous or procedural assignment. And we will see more of that on the examples on later slides. Having worked directly with gates and uh, looked at simple examples of making or synthesizing logic circuits, the Structural description is probably uh, the most intuitive and most obvious in the beginning. 
So the structural description of a digital circuit consists of the interconnection of basic circuit elements such as logic gates. Verilog includes gate level primitives for uh, all important types of gates AND, OR, NOT, NAND, NOR, XOR, and XNOR. There are also buffer gates, for example, but we will not look at those at this point in time. And here is a corresponding command. So if you want to implement an AND gate or specify an AND gate in Verilog, then we just simply say the keyword AND and then the variables associated with that. And the rule is that the first variable is the output of the gate and all other variables are inputs to the gate. And you can extend this to as many inputs as you need. So I could also have written an AND um, F X1 X2 X3 and then the very large compiler knows that now a three input AND gate is uh, what we are going to need. Okay, so here's an example for an OR gate with four inputs, so F again is the output, and then the first thing here is the output, and then all the others are inputs, so A, B, C, and D in this particular case. And for the NOT gate, the command looks like this, and the output would be Y, the input would be X, and uh, in a similar fashion you do that for NAND gates or NOR gates, etc. Notice that each of those commands ends in a semicolon. And that will probably be one of your most frequent mistakes when you write very log code that you forget one of those semicolons somewhere. And the compiler then will complain about that. Now in general, a logic circuit is specified in the form of a module which has inputs and outputs. Those inputs and outputs, they're called ports. So, for example, the OR gate, if you think of this as a module, that will, the name of the module would be OR, and then we would have an output port, and we would have four input ports in this particular case. So this needs to be declared at the time the module is set up so that the compiler later knows um, in which direction the signals should be flowing. So here we're starting with an example and what we are looking at through actually most of the examples here is to use a half adder or sometime later a full adder. So the half adder adds two bits together, I call them A here and B, and it produces a sum S and a carry C. So a sum and a carry, and here's the truth table. So if we add 0 plus 0, that gives us a sum of 0 and no carry. If we add 0 plus 1 or 1 plus 0, gives us a sum of 1 and no carry. And if we have 1 plus 1, that gives 2, and that means that we now need 2 bits to represent this, so that becomes 1, 0, two to the 0 times 2 to the 0 plus 1 times 2 to the 2, and the 2 to the 2 uh, portion here is just simply called the carry, that's what's being carried over into the next digit. Here's the circuit drawn out for this, essentially the sum is equal to the XOR of A and B, and we could have drawn it directly as an XOR. We will do this a little bit later. For now, we're just using the POS, uh, the SOP form, sum of products form, where we start with AND gates first, and then have OR gates. And for the carry, we just simply have an AND gate, and then the output from there. So this is an AND or NOT implementation, and we will carry that through initially for the structural description in Verilog. 
So here's what this looks like in Verilog. I made a little header here, um, and it's shown in green, so that means it's a comment. So if you start out with a forward slash and a star, then everything that comes after that until you encounter the reverse combination, the star, and then the forward slash is, in, is considered to be a comment. So this is a comment, and it just simply tells us what this uh, code is all about. So that's not necessary in the Verilog code, but it's good practice to have something like that. So what we're doing here is we show the structural specification of a half header with structural specification one. There will be another one that will be a little bit different. So to start the module, you will start with the keyword module. And then you have to give a name to the module. The name has to follow certain conventions. It has to start with a letter. And then after that, any letter or any number can be in there. And you can also have underscores, like this one here. And you can have the dollar sign. All other symbols are not allowed in those names. And then comes the declaration of the uh, ports to the module. So A, B, C, and S. At this point, when you just look at that here, we don't know yet whether those are inputs or outputs. We just know that this is the interface to the outside world. Okay, so these are the ports. And then we declare what kind of ports they are, whether they are inputs or outputs, by saying input A, comma B, or output C, comma S. In newer versions of Verilog, it's actually possible to make this declaration of input and output directly in the parentheses here in the line where the module is defined. Notice also the semicolon at the end of each of the commands. So that's um, similar to C. And in fact, Verilog uh, was formulated in a way to be as similar as possible with C. Then some internal wires may have to be used. So if we go back once more to the schematic here, we have some output here from the, from the NOT gate, which is going to be called AN and BN. Okay, so let's label this in here. So this is AN, so basically standing for A negated. Uh, we cannot do anything like an A with a bar over it in um, Verilog. And then here we have BN, again, for negated. And then we go with that into those AND gates, and we produce some output U and V. And then this output U and V, we then are going to take into the OR gate and produce the output S. So that's the meaning here of those wire definitions. Those are internal quantities. And um, each of those can carry one bit. Then comes the actual structural description. So we have a not A and A. So that uh, means that what we are doing here is we have A going in and A and coming out. Like this. The same thing for B and BN coming out. Then we have the AND here. So this particular thing means that we have an output of U, then an AN as the input. So that's the output from that inverter. And then we have also a B as input. That's one of the input variables that we have for the module. Similarly, we have an AND gate to produce the output V from A and the negated version of B. And then we take U and V together. And we make this OR gate with U and V. And that produces the sum output S. And for the carry output, we can just simply take the AND between A and B and output this as C. The module is ended with the end module command. 
And here is another way to add comments to very low code. The ones that we looked at up here with the slash, uh, star, and up, up to star slash, this is a multi-line comment. And this one here is an inline comment. It just extends for the rest of the line, and then the next line um, is going to be a regular line again without um, being necessarily a comment line. So here I just simply showed that this is the end of the half at underbar struct one of this um, module here that we named with that name. If it's a short module like that, uh, this is not really necessary. And it's not necessary for the very low code to function properly. But for larger modules, it's kind of useful to be able to see at the end um, what actually, which module is actually ended by the end module command. So now we look again at the half adder. So we have the same inputs, A, B, S, and C. But now we just reformulated it so that it's going to be implemented using NAND gates. Okay, and the very low code with a couple of additions to it. It's now, we call it half add on the bar struct2, because it's the second example of a structural specification. We have the same uh, ports here as we had in the previous example. And again, the inputs are A and B, the outputs are C and S. We have some internal wires again. And the way we have declared those here, or we're going to use those here, is U here, V here, and then CN in between those two NAND gates here. Okay, so we produce now U as being tilde A comma B. So that is a new uh, element here. If you write tilde A, that's the same thing as A complement or A overbar. So we did a wave is actually explicitly declaring those not gates here by just saying what we have here is tilde A. Okay, and we have to done the same thing here for the not of B, which now becomes tilde B. And then we take the NAND gate uh, or the NAND combination of U and V and make the output S for the sum. For the carry, Bit, if we insist on having to use NAND gates, we do now have to produce the intermediate result CN and then invert that result explicitly. This is done here by using another NAND gate with the two inputs tied together in order to produce the C output. Okay, so that's done here, the NAND of um, C, N, A, and B, that gives us the carry over bar. And then we just take that carry over bar and put it into both inputs of the NAND gate, like this, and produce the output uh, C in this way. We mentioned already that Module names have to start with a letter followed by any letters or numbers plus the underscore or the dollar sign. Uh, one thing we have not mentioned yet is that Verilog is case sensitive. So if I would have written here instead of the capital half add, if I would have just written half add like this, underbar struct to, then that would refer to a different module and Verilog would complain if I just mistakenly used the lowercase here and then in some other uh, place use the uppercase. If we were limited to just using the structural description, we would not really gain that much with using computer-aided design tools because it is still uh, the cumbersome way of uh, breaking everything up into gates and then wiring those gates, uh, doing perhaps some uh, minimization in terms of the minimizing the number of gates or number of inputs and so forth. So what actually really 
uh, makes a hardware description language useful is if you can go to higher levels of abstraction. And the behavioral uh, kind of description brings us to such a higher level of abstraction. Okay, so instead of describing a circuit using the gate level primitives, we now can specify logic expressions that define the behavior of the circuit. So for the half adder, we're now going to say that S is equal to A naught and B, or A and B naught. So this is, uh, as we mentioned before, that's the same thing as the XOR of A and B. And for the carry, we just say the carry is equal to A and B. Here is again the truth table of the half adder, just repeated from a previous slide. So now in the very log code, here's what this is going to look like. First of all, the header is now half adder behavioral specification one, because there will be some others later, as opposed to structural specification. The header here of the module, or the beginning of the module, is exactly the same as we had before, except that I added the keyword behave uh, to it, just so that we can distinguish it from the structural description. The port descriptions, that looks the same as we had before. We need to declare which ones are inputs and which ones are outputs. That is no different than before. But now, we use the assign statement. So that's a continuous assignment to a net or to a wire S. Okay, so what that means, a continuous assignment, is that whenever the right-hand side of this assignment changes, then the left-hand side is immediately going to follow that change. So there is no waiting, for example, for a clock pulse until the right-hand side is being looked at. So this is a, basically a direct connection from the output of this to this S that gets assigned to the output from here. Uh, you will see over time that uh, the distinction between nets and registers, which is the other thing, uh, is important in Verilog. So the other thing that we notice here is that if we want to do something like A naught and B, in Verilog, we have to write this as tilde A for the A naught, and then the ampersand for the AND B. And similarly for the OR, if you want to do A or B, we have to write this in Verilog as A and then a vertical bar and B. This one in particular can lead to unexpected results if you forget about it, um, if you just use the, the plus as it is in the textbook, for example, and put it in here, then Verilog actually thinks it has to compute the actual sum of the two things. So and that would be the sum over integers or over reals, not the uh, modular two sum. Okay, so we have uh, entered this here with the ampersand for the and and the vertical bar for the or and the ampersand down here. And you can see that uh, this is in a way more compact than what we had before. And it actually also gives uh, more freedom to the compiler to then implement it in a particular way in some FPGA or some other programmable device.